Ice Age North America, vast and uninhabited. A frozen land dominated by beasts. Who first set foot on this empty continent is the greatest mystery in North American archaeology. But now a new discovery is rewriting history. This spear point is the oldest man-made object ever found in North America. Scientists believe that whoever made it discovered the continent. During the worst climate our species ever endured, they set out on an epic journey. Struggled across phenomenal distances. Faced incredible dangers. Against all odds, reached the new world. But the biggest revelation of all is where these first Americans came from. Seventeen thousand years ago, the world is in the grip of the last great ice age. In the south of France, food is scarce. The humans who live here are modern homo sapiens. They're waging a war for their survival. This is what they have spent days stalking, wild horses. They were hoping for more, but the brutal climate is killing off the herds. They can't afford to let them escape. Clan leader Bayorg knows that to kill big game animals, they must risk their lives. But Guyan is his only son, and Bayorg doesn't want to lose him. The hunters know that game is scarce, but what they don't know is why. Modern humans evolved a hundred thousand years ago. These were the worst climate conditions our species ever faced. They are affecting the entire planet.
It is the height of the last great ice age. Throughout the Earth's history, thousands of ice ages have frozen the planet. The most recent one was near its peak 17,000 years ago. Permanent ice spread from the poles, swallowing a third of the landmass. Across the northern hemisphere, the continents were crushed under ice over a mile thick. In France, giant glaciers descended from the mountains. Clans of Ice Age humans who had lived here for tens of thousands of years were being fenced into a shrinking land. Many of them have taken refuge from the ice along the Atlantic coastline. This clan has learned to survive here, eking out a living from the ocean. But the fishing is slow. Only Zia the clan leader's daughter is having any success. There are 15 people in this clan. Each person plays a part in the group's survival. Their specialized skills transform raw materials into tools. Some make weapons from stone. Others use bone needles to make clothes warm enough to protect them. Working together is the key to their survival. But today, hunger is creating tension. Dear! You ruined that! Today, 17,000 years later, only a few tantalizing fragments remain of this clan. Archaeologists call these people Solutrians. They invented objects we still use today, like the eyed needle. They carved images of the prey they hunted, like the mammoth. But most importantly, they revolutionized weapons technology. For a hundred thousand years, mankind only ever made spear points like these from simple flakes of stone. But the Solutrians took a quantum leap forward. Using advanced techniques, they made spear points that were 50% thinner and lighter. These edges are 100 times sharper than a steel razor. Archaeologist Bruce Bradley has spent 20 years teaching himself how to craft weapons like Solutrians. The flaking is so complex that you can't just think your way through it, you've got to feel your way through it. Bruce has learned that no other Stone Age culture was capable of making tools this way. This technique, this, this way of doing things, is, is the most complex uh, technology and, and method that we know of in the Ice Age. 
Bruce's unique knowledge of this technique would unlock a mystery. In 1996, archaeologists made one of the most baffling discoveries ever made in North America. This spear point was found in Virginia. When Bruce saw it, he was amazed. It looked identical to those discovered in France. Carbon dating showed it was buried 17,000 years ago, when archaeologists believed North America was uninhabited. It was a revelation. Could it indicate the impossible? The idea that people may have populated the New World from uh, Europe, the European continent, is, is so dramatically different from anything I was ever taught that it's, it's almost a, an unbelievable concept. For almost a century, scientists have believed that North America wasn't discovered until 12,000 years ago, when people from Asia crossed a land bridge from Russia to Alaska. But what Bruce had seen challenged the accepted theory. It was one of those sort of, no, this can't be, and yet, how can it not be? Because it's, uh, it's there. It's right there in front of us. Had Europeans brought their technology to North America 6,000 years before anyone else? And if they had, the even tougher question facing scientists was, how? To reach North America, they would have to cross the ultimate natural barrier, the Atlantic Ocean. Armed with only Stone Age technology, was this even possible? After days away, the hunters return with only one horse. Bayorg's first responsibility is towards his family, his wife, his daughter Zia, and his eldest son, Guyan. But as the clan leader, he must share the kill with everyone. Bayorg's clan need to kill more game than this to survive. This horse will last less than a week. Bayorg knows his clan is in trouble. No part of the horse is wasted. By eating brains and eyes, they get vitamins they can't get anywhere else. And in the marrow of the bones, they find the most crucial food of all, fat. It gives them energy and warmth to survive in this freezing climate. Mm. <laughs> With full stomachs, life is good. But soon the hunger will be back. A week later, the horse meat is all but gone. Your Check 
As the leader, Bayorg must punish the murderer. He is also the clan's shaman. He buries his finest spear points as an offering, so that the spirits might guide his decision. It is tradition among all clans to either kill or exile a murderer. The exile knows that he needs the clan to survive. Alone, his chances are slim. Come. Come, what are you doing? I'm Bayorg now must provide a solution to their hunger, or there will be more deaths. To Bayorg's people, this cave is the center of their spiritual world. It is sacred. As their shaman, Bayorg must make life and death decisions for the group. Here is where he makes them. Deep underground are secret chambers. There he will paint images and seek visions. He is hoping they will show him the way to end starvation in his clan. Seventeen thousand years ago, in caves across Spain and France, Ice Age clans left the most amazing record of their culture. Their art. It is a unique window into their world. They painted the animals that they depended on to survive. But these images can unlock even deeper mysteries about how the deteriorating climate was changing their lives. In Spain's Nirha cave, Bruce Bradley is literally retracing the footsteps of the ancients. Chambers in this cave could swallow a football stadium. just unbelievable. <laughs> it almost leaves me speechless. Other passages are barely large enough for a person to squeeze through.
But Ice Age people explored this cave with nothing more than candlelight. A day's journey. Bruce has traveled over a mile underground to discover a tiny hidden chamber. Within it, something totally unexpected. Absolutely amazing. Now, this, these are just amazing figures. They're sort of elongated lozenge-shaped things, but they look like they've got fins on the ends, and th this is why they've been interpreted as seals, and I think it's a good interpretation. And the fact that it's, it's seals as opposed to horses or deer, I think has, it's got to be extremely significant. This may be a really good indication that the Slutrian folks were looking to the sea, and more specifically to the edge of the ice for their sustenance, for their new sort of new culture, their new way of living. And this could be an example of, of how important the, the Salutrian people considered these animals to be. Bayorg will hunt seals. It is not a decision he takes lightly. To reach them, he must lead an expedition to the most dangerous place they know the Atlantic Ocean. Bayorg knows seals can be found beyond the horizon. He will take his daughter Zia, his son Guyan, and Guyan's friend Giard. Everyone else will await their return. The younger generation have never been far out in the open ocean before. Bayorg fears for their lives. They must be totally self-sufficient. Where they're going, there will be no firewood and no fresh water. Zia's in charge of life support. Without her dried lichen for tinder, there will be no fire. They pack specially designed seal harpoons. They may not return for weeks. Their boat, covered in skins and waterproofed with fat, will be their home. The hunters are pursuing seals. Their hides, meat, and especially their fat might save their clan. But they have good reason to be apprehensive. Because the seals inhabit a totally alien environment, the pack ice. It's a rich hunting ground, but full of hidden dangers. Seals feed and breed amid the ice. They are at home among the powerful freezing currents that run beneath. During the last ice age, Arctic conditions reached deep into southern Europe. 
but scientists had no idea what a dramatic impact this had on the ocean. Until now. We weren't there ourselves. We, didn't, we don't know what it was like, but we believe that we can reconstruct what it must have been like. To find out, Richard Peltier and his team at the University of Toronto fed every known piece of Ice Age data into a vast supercomputer, the largest of its kind in the world. Crunching numbers for five months, the computer unveiled a detailed picture of conditions for every single day of the last Ice Age. We get a picture of how salty the water was everywhere, at every point in the global ocean, at what the temperature was. Similarly, in the atmosphere, we make predictions of how cloudy it was during the month of February, 21,000 years ago. But in the Atlantic Ocean, the data revealed something shocking. Every year in Ice Age Europe, the clan's world was utterly transformed. At the onset of winter, the entire coast of Europe froze. The ice reached as far south as the Mediterranean. But even more dramatically, this ice extended as a 30-foot thick sheet across the middle of the Atlantic. And all the way to North America. Two million square miles of ocean would freeze solid every year. Europe and North America, connected by almost 4,000 miles of ice. An ice bridge. Could the clan use this to discover America? While tracking seals, the hunters are focused on survival. Where warm currents meet the pack ice, life is abundant. But they need more than fish if they are to feed the clan back home. The frozen seas were fed by vast glaciers, often over a mile thick that dumped billions of tons of nutrient-rich soil into the water. These nutrients were carried under the ice flows, providing the ideal environment for microscopic algae to grow. The algae provided a rich harvest. It supported billions of fish. In turn, this meant populations of birds and seals massively increased. For the hunters who faced starvation on land, the ocean was bountiful. After a week of hard paddling, they are now almost 100 miles off the French coast. They set up a camp on the edge of the ice. Their boat, when flipped over, doubles as a shelter. They set off to hunt. They may need to travel half a day before they find seals. Every step they take could be their last. Hidden cracks in the ice spell instant death. A free-swimming seal is impossible to catch, but Bayorg knows another way. In camp, Zia is taking steps to ensure their survival. On the ice, there is no firewood. 
But Zia is prepared. She has lichen for tinder, and she uses animal fat for fuel. After three hours struggling across the ice, they have finally found what they are looking for. Air holes. Because seals are mammals, they maintain breathing holes to the surface. When they come up for air, they are vulnerable to the hunter's strike. The waiting game begins. The temperature has dropped near zero. But Zia's fire is not for heat. It serves a far more important purpose. Melting water. Without fresh water, they could die in a matter of days. But they can't eat the ice because doing so uses up too much body heat so their only option is to melt it. Here, fire is life. If they continue to be this successful, they will be able to fill their boat with seals. The clan will be saved. They cannot underestimate the dangers of the ice.
The seal provides them with everything they need. The rich, dense fat is both food and fuel for their fires. Like Zia's coat, the skin of this seal will be sewn into warm clothes. Even the bones will be made into tools. Beorg learned his ice survival skills from his forefathers. Alone on the ice, far from home. How long will it be before bad weather begins to bite? The hunting party needs more seals. But paddling further into unknown waters, they begin to encounter clues from another world. Driftwood has been floating out of the west, from a land they cannot imagine. For the hunters steering away from the European coast, this is the first hint that something lies beyond. On the other side of the Atlantic, floods have washed trees into the ocean. They are swept up by the warm waters of the Gulf Stream current. More powerful than the combined forces of all the world's rivers, the Gulf Stream is the engine of the Atlantic. After two weeks paddling west away from Europe, they are now almost 400 miles from home. The hunt has taken them further out than Bayorg has ever been before. And in the Ice Age, they were able to witness a natural marvel. Hunting is going well, but as the only one with experience of the ice, Bayorg is concerned they may have ventured too far. Touch. 
With bad weather on the way, Bayorg is eager to kill more seals before heading home. The only person with experience on the ice is gone. Without him, the young hunters face a difficult decision. It's impossible to continue in the storm. They must return to the ice sheet and make shelter. Using his computer model, Dr. Richard Peltier made another surprising discovery. Because of such an extreme temperature difference between the warm Gulf Stream and the frozen poles, storms in the Ice Age were superstorms. Wind speeds would have been, we expect, very much stronger during this glacial time than they are, than they are at present. Temperatures would have been very, very much lower. They have, would have been living in a very hostile environment. Far out in the Atlantic, the young hunters have been caught in a severe Ice Age storm. The violent weather has kept them pinned under their boat for two weeks. They've hardly eaten and are half starved. And they are concerned about Giard. He has symptoms of a disease well known to sailors, scurvy. Hey, 
ギターとギター伝語ゲン The storm may have slowed, but the group is only now about to discover its effects. has crushed the ice flows together. As the summer continues, the ice thins and storms shatter the flow into pieces. The fragments float free, recombine and break apart again as they twist in a giant whirlpool, taking the young hunters with them. This phenomenon still takes place in Arctic regions today. Broken ice flows are at the mercy of currents, and especially the wind. But where are they going? The Gulf Stream drives a current that runs west along the edge of the ice. Combined with the violent storm, it has pushed them rapidly away from Europe. Moving at an average four miles per hour, in just three weeks, they have been pushed 2,000 miles. They are two-thirds of the way to America. Lost in a frozen ocean, the young hunter's boat is now a burden. They have no choice but to drag it. Navigating only by the sun, they head south in the hope of finding open water. The group is now in the harshest and most barren part of the ocean. There's nothing to hunt. They've eaten the last of the seal meat. Worse still, they're dangerously low on fat. When they run out, they'll be unable to melt water and will die from dehydration. Giard's scurvy is severe. Without vitamin C in his diet, his cells are coming unglued. He is slowly bleeding to death within his own skin.
Porfirio. She held Aldo and Bataijan. What's good then, guys? the dance thingy you could get. Angular. Thousands of miles from home was a vision like this caused by starvation or madness. One scientist believes he can explain the mysterious appearance of mountains far out in the sea. University of Manitoba physicist Valdemar Lane is a mirage hunter. He searches for these strange phenomena in the Canadian Arctic. People living in Arctic conditions such as the Inuit or anyone in northern Canada, they're generally very familiar with these mirages. They would see them quite frequently. Lane has recorded many sightings. To explain them, he investigated how light behaves in cold climates. He discovered the ultra-cold temperatures above the surface of an ice sheet actually cause light rays to bend. This means that the impossible is now possible. Objects can be seen beyond the horizon. In a very clear air, you could see two or three hundred kilometers. In fact, um, there have been documented cases where someone has seen a distance of 500 kilometers and actually recognized the object they were looking at. But because the light rays are bent, the image is distorted. I believe in the very early times, the mirage would have been interpreted as being some kind of magical display on the horizon. The hunters finally have hope of reaching land, but they have no way of knowing what the land is or if they'll survive long enough to get there. Exhausted, the group drifts for days. Malnutrition begins to take its toll. But carried by the ocean currents, they are about to make a great discovery. Finally, after months surviving on the frozen ocean, the hunters have arrived in the new world. <sighs> but where exactly are they? These are the Grand Banks. 17,000 years ago, this was the easternmost tip of North America. Today, these islands are submerged because when the Ice Age ended, billions of gallons of ice in the polar caps melted. Sea levels rose almost 500 feet. The entire coastline of North America was pushed back 100 miles. But for the hunters, the Grand Banks were a gateway to the New World. Their ocean voyage of more than 3,000 miles was at an end.
but their discovery of the new world had just begun. The land holds the cure to Giard's illness. This is scurvy grass. Ice Age people knew its medicinal qualities. The stems are rich in vitamin C, exactly what Giard's body so desperately needs. The young hunters are recovering from their odyssey at sea, scavenging what food they can find in the barren landscape. Back home in Europe's harsh environment, mammoths were dying out. But in North America, the mammoth thrived, feeding off extensive grasslands. Such a beast was more than just a windfall supply of meat and hide. It was the ultimate hunting challenge. The mammoth was sacred to the Ice Age clans. Of all the land mammals living at that time, the mammoth was the largest. Standing up to 11 feet tall at the shoulder, weighing up to eight tons with 12 foot long tusks, it would take special hunting skills to kill such a beast. You just hit a mammoth with everything you have and you don't kill it, you wound it and you follow it for days until it finally dies and then you dispatch it. The young hunters are eager to try and kill a mammoth, but they have a serious problem. Their seal harpoons are useless against such a large animal. They need spears with razor sharp points, but they don't have the right stone to make them. To find the right stone in this unfamiliar land will require detailed exploration. In the Ice Age, people traveled hundreds of miles to quarry the best rock. The newcomers have no choice but to journey into the unknown. But are they up to it? Let's 
Give me some. Guyan, Giard, and Zia are not the only people to have crossed the ice bridge. They have been captured by exiles who have banded together. If the two groups can cooperate, their chances of survival increase. It's a mangling me. Those like It's a mangling me. Nanga. The young hunters have no choice but to join their captors. They can't risk life without their boat. The leader of the exiles, Atan, has insisted they travel south in search of food, and more importantly, the right stone to make tools. There are increasing signs that the New World is very different from Europe. In the Ice Age, a giant wall of ice dominated North America, more than a mile thick. At the foot of the ice were great open grasslands. Grazing on these grasslands were creatures new to the clan, and others in numbers greater than they could imagine. were not the only predators competing in North America. The saber-toothed tiger weighed twice as much as a modern-day lion and boasted front fangs more than six inches long. It could easily kill prey twice its size. 
Even more dangerous was the short-faced bear. Standing over 10 feet tall, this bear was the largest that ever lived. Capable of speeds over 35 miles per hour, it was the most powerful predator in the Ice Age. The exiles were seal hunting when they were caught on ice floes that carried them west. But unlike their captives, they have no reason to return home. The young hunters will have to learn to trust the exiles. Alone, they won't survive. to survive here, they must fend off attackers. They urgently need new weapons, and for that, they must find the right stone. Stashing their boat, they head south, away from the ice. They follow a river inland in search of exposed rocks. After a long trek, they have finally reached what will one day be Virginia. Here they've found what they've been searching for. Seventeen thousand years from now, archaeologists will find this spear point. It is the earliest evidence of humans in North America. The archaeological record shows that the clan camped here for one reason. Flint, the rock that makes everything possible. Ice Age people traveled hundreds of miles for the right kind of stone. They can shape it into knives, scrapers, any kind of tool. Giard's spear point is sharper than a surgeon's scalpel. It can penetrate the thickest tides. Cool. It is time to find their prey. It doesn't take long. This dung will lead them to the greatest challenge known to Ice Age hunters, mammoths. What can they do? Dosho, I'm going to get a gun. I'm going
Before the hunt can begin, the clan must prepare. They will use special spear points, but these are not meant for killing. For years, archaeologists have wondered about mysterious burials of spear points they call caches. Found both in Europe and North America, they contain oversized spear points over a foot long and too thin for killing. So what were they for? Those are extraordinary pieces of, of work. They're masterpieces of work. The fact that these tend to be really oversized pieces that don't look like they were designed for use uh, I think personally argues more for some kind of offering. So there, there's a whole different sort of philosophical worldview being expressed by this material. I think it's something that sets them aside intellectually. Bizarre. The group is embarking on the most dangerous and ambitious hunt of their lives. They will have to rely on each other. The ritual is cementing a bond. They are forming a new clan. Their plan must be precise. Mammoths have an acute sense of hearing and of smell. An adult mammoth can run twice as fast as a human.
Let them scare him up. the dogs. The discovery of the spear point in Virginia is proof that Europeans reached North America. But after that, all evidence of them vanishes. Did they journey deeper into the New World, or did they die out? The answer may have been found in a new and rapidly expanding science, the study of human DNA. Every human gene is a history book, containing markers dating back to the origin of our species. While looking at DNA samples from the Ojibwe First Nation of Central Ontario, molecular anthropologist Mike Brown uncovered something shocking. Frankly, when we looked at the initial data, I think that uh, surprised uh, was the first reaction. Mike was expecting proof that all native North Americans originally migrated from Asia. Instead, he found a totally unexpected DNA marker. But could the fate of the clan be explained by this new marker? Surprise number one was the fact that uh, it comprises a full quarter of some Native American populations. That's a lot. Surprise number two was that we found this lineage in, uh, in, the, in the Native Americans, but also it had been found in Europe. The evidence meant something extraordinary. The story of the European hunters did not end in Virginia. They must have survived, but how? After the death of her brother, Zia and the new clan have set up a winter camp on the coast. They have a compelling reason to stay. Zia and Giard's daughter may truly be the first North American. She won't grow up alone. 3,000 miles away, on the far side of the Atlantic, the remaining clans still look to the sea for their survival. 
the ice bridge is still open. In time, others can cross. Talking about folks that found a way to exploit this incredibly rich environment, this ice, ice edge environment, and then had land at both ends and just kept going back and forth for generation after generation. Over several hundred years or a thousand years, we might be talking about thousands of people that went back and forth. Six thousand years later, these are Zia and Girard's descendants. They have spread deep into the continent. The ice age is over. The ice bridge has now melted. But as one highway closes, another opens. In the Yukon and the Northwest Territories, melting ice has exposed a land bridge to Asia. New people can now enter North America. For descendants of the clan, an extraordinary meeting was about to take place. I think that encounter would have been a, a very interesting thing to witness. They probably had completely different languages, completely, they were totally unfamiliar with each other. Um, and that, that encounter, I think, would, have be, would be something to behold. For the first time in history, humankind has circled the planet. People from Europe and people from Asia will now forge a new civilization the native peoples of the New World. It's just such an exciting thing because it's so different from what I was taught. It gives us a whole new way to think about how the entire human race spread around the world. Bruce Bradley and Dennis Stanford have uncovered what archaeologists thought impossible. That cavemen from Europe discovered North America. This stone spear point is rewriting the story of a continent. It reveals the first Americans made an epic journey that changed the course of history.